Accounts of phantom black dogs have emerged in almost every part of the world for centuries. The huge nocturnal canines are often described as malevolent or foreshadowing misfortune, but are sometimes also betrayed as great protectors. Here are some accounts from England, where there seems to have been a prevalence of these eerie ghosts. Early sightings. In almost every county in England, there is a traditional belief in spectral dog beings. The earliest accounts of black dog sightings in England have been traced back to 1127. The frightening creature is reported as taking different forms, but had some common characteristics. They were always massive creatures with shaggy coats, long ears and tails, and large glowing red eyes. Some details varied to make each dog unique, such as wearing a chain around its neck, being headless, having a fiendish grin, or even a human face. In some cases, the ghost dogs were as large as a house, while other legends described them as walking on their hind legs. The dark beasts were infamous for vanishing into a mist and leaving behind no trace of their strange visits. In the various locations, the black dogs bear different names, but a common feature is their reputation as an evil spirit, haunting spots where evil deeds have been committed or where some disaster can be expected. A well-known British ghost dog legend describes a frightening event at the parish church in Suffolk in 1577. It began with a torrid storm erupting while parishioners attended a Sunday morning service. Illuminated by flashes of fire, a black dog materialised in the church, leaping around and creating panic in the congregation. Terrifying, the phantom dog claimed the life of two men kneeling in prayer and left severe burns on another man. By contrast, the early tale of a benevolent black dog was told by Johnny Greenwood from Swancliffe. The man reported being accompanied by a mysterious black dog while trekking at night in the woods. The apparition stayed by his side until he emerged out from amongst the trees. Years later, two prisoners admitted that they had planned to rob and dispatch Johnny that night during the journey through the woods, but changed their minds after observing the presence of the large black dog following him. Another popular black dog story originated in Dartmoor, where a notorious squire called Cabell was known as a huntsman who had sold his soul to the devil. When he passed in 1677, black hounds were said to have materialised around his burial chamber and his spirit was seen hunting with black dogs. The legend is said to have inspired Arthur Conan Doyle to write his famous tale, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Some traditional narratives concerning black dogs were related by ethnographer Edwin Sidney Hartland in his 1890 publication about British paranormal phenomena. He states that on the Isle of Man, the so-called Morph Dog was purported to haunt Peel Castle, where it inhabited every room, but particularly the guard chamber. Here, as soon as candles were lit, it would lie down in front of the fire near the soldiers, who had become used to its presence. Aware of its malevolent nature, they never interfere with it, until the night one of the number, who was drunk, vowed to test if it were dog or devil. His experiment rendered him instantly sober and speechless, living only another three days and expiring from a mysterious, agonising condition. This story was backed up by multiple witnesses and a similar tale told of a farmer in a village near Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. The man had the routine of going every morning and night to milk his cows in a meadow, which was a long walk from the village. To shorten his journey, he often crossed a neighbour's field and climbed through a gap in the hedge. However, one evening he found the gap blocked by a large, black, ferocious looking dog. After a closer inspection of the dog's fiery eyes and fiend like appearance, he decided to use a distant gate instead. This necessary detour continued night after night as the same dog routinely occupied the gap in the hedge, until one night when returning home with a friend, he again found the dog there, looking even bigger and fiercer than ever. The unfortunate farmer, trying to appear courageous to his companion, removed the milk pails from a yoke around his shoulders and, trembling all over, shouted at the dog, Now, you black fiend, I'll try what you're made of. He lifted the yoke with both hands and brought it down on the dog with all his strength. The creature vanished and the man clapped senseless. 
While surviving the incident, he was said to have remained speechless and paralysed to the end of his days. Ethel Rudkin Ethel Rudkin is a little-known archaeologist and folklore researcher who made a study of the black dog phenomena in a home country of Lincolnshire in England. Her interest in the spectral pooches arose from a personal experience. She herself had witnessed the spectacle of a ghostly black dog in 1926 at the ruins of Dunwich Abbey. Her groundbreaking collection and investigation of black dog encounter testimonies was published in the journal Folklore in 1938. Rudkin explained that her sources were always trustworthy people, simply describing events they had experienced as truly taking place. Her comment was, perhaps it is because I have seen the black dog and can therefore believe that the narrator has also seen them. That I have been able to get such good first-hand stories. The purpose of Rudkin's study was to document the beliefs in her county regarding the phantom-like black dogs. While it could be argued that the witnesses Rudkin interviewed simply encountered an actual dog that was large and black, the point of her research was that none of these people believed that to be so. Every single witness whose account she included in her collection was convinced they encountered the supernatural being known as a black dog. Regarding any doubt as to the intelligence or truthfulness of her informants, Rudkin parried criticism with this statement. I would like to emphasize this point. I have never yet had a black dog story from anyone who was weak, either in body or mind. Black dog sightings have taken place across Europe, including France, Ireland, Scotland and England, as well as North America. However, here are some of Rudkin's historical accounts gleaned from a native Lincolnshire. Fish Pond Road In the small village of Wilton, there was a pond known as Blyber Fish Pond and the road that passed by this pond was notorious for being haunted by a black dog. Sometime before 1938, when Ethel Rudkin published an account of the phenomena, she was given information about certain sightings. She identified her informant as simply Mrs. G.B. The woman told her that in her younger days, she would meet a young man, whom she later married, where every evening they would stroll together by the pond and then return home in different directions. Mrs. G.B. would follow the road by Blyborough Fish Pond to head for the village of Grangham on her own. One night she suddenly became aware that a large black dog was trailing behind her. Finding his presence annoying, the woman slowed down to allow the animal to catch up with her. As the eerie creature came side to side with the walking woman, she swiftly raised her umbrella and struck out at the black dog as hard as she could. To a horror, the blow passed clean through the body of the animal without ruffling a hair. The black dog persevered in following the young woman, walking beside her until they reached the ash tree at the end of Chapel's Lane. Here the phantom canine vanished, whether up the tree or into it, she was unable to determine. In 1934, an Irishman was labouring on farms during potato harvest time, also in the town of Welton. He later reported to Rudkin that he had been followed by an unnaturally large dog as he walked along the road to Blyton Fish Pond. He said that he had found the experience terrifying as he had sensed the dog was not a natural animal. It was only later that he found out that the area had a history of being haunted by a large black dog. Bell Hole Farm Around 1908, there was a farm about a mile west of the town of Curtin in Lincolnshire called Bell Hole. One day a month, a nurse from town, called Mrs. S. Moore, would visit the family to assist with health matters. On one of her visits, the children of the house were chatting to her about the local black dog as they were being put to bed. They asked the nurse if she was scared of meeting the creature on her way home in the dark and what she would do if she did. To which the nurse promptly responded, I shall put him in my pocket. She came to regret her words of bravado later, once the children were settled, and as she walked towards her home in Curtin. As she trudged along on the homeward path, a bizarre occurrence unnerved her. She later reported that not only did the black dog appear, but it ran circles around the terrified nurse, taunting, put me in your pocket, put me in your pocket. Flying Hounds In researching his compendium of the black dog phenomena, Hartland had heard bizarre accounts 
are what he described as aerial hounds in secluded locations like Cornwall. One tells of a herdsman who was walking home across the moors of Cornwall one windy night when he heard the distant bang of dogs. He quickly ascertained the sound as a sinister yelping of what were known locally as the devil's dandy dogs. He was still three or four miles away from home and the terrified man started running despite the treacherous ground. The unearthly howling of the hounds, driven by the hunter's fiendish shout, advanced closer so that soon they were so upon him that he could not resist turning his head to look at them. The sight horrified him. The shadowy huntsman with large blazing eyes, horns, a tail and claws carrying a long hunting pole with a mass of dogs black in the air for miles around him, each one snorting fire and yowling with chilling savagery. With nowhere to hide or shelter, the beleaguered rustic resigned himself to suffering the full fury of these hellhounds. Suddenly, a flash of memory gave him hope. He'd once been told that no evil spirit can withstand the power of prayer. He quickly knelt and started uttering holy invocations, which seemed to weaken the yelping of the hounds, then stilled them. The huntsman shouted strange words, which in the old language meant the boy prays, and called off his dandy dogs, allowing the poor herdsman to hasten home as fast as his trembling body permitted. 